All right, in this video, I'd like to walk through an example I've put together of uh, communicating between host software and a sketch running on the Arduino uh, via the serial link that's provided by the Arduino ecosystem. And we're going to be able to uh, send uh, commands over the serial link and get information about the state of something uh, going on inside the Arduino. And we're going to be able to send commands that have parameters that allow us to affect the behavior of what's connected to the Arduino. And um, hopefully that'll provide you with a good foundation for working on uh, Mini Project 2. So um, I have a couple of different versions of the sketch that I've put together. The sketch um, will interact with the same uh, basic hardware setup that we had in the finite state machine. Um, series of examples. We have a green LED, a yellow LED, and a red LED, two tactile switches, and a potentiometer. And um, you can see that the green and yellow LED here are flashing with a uh, period of one second. And um, they're both flashing in synchrony right now. Um, the actual behavior that this is implementing is a little bit different actually between the green and the yellow LEDs. Um, the green LED has a fixed period of one second, but we can uh, adjust what's called the duty cycle, which is a number that goes between 0 and 1, or between 0 and 100%. And that duty cycle represents the fraction of the period over which the signal is high. And so a duty cycle um, of 10% would mean that the light would flash on for 10% uh, of the cycle, which is 0.1 seconds, and it would be off for 90% of the cycle, which is uh, 900 milliseconds. And um, right now we have a duty cycle of 50%. So the yellow LED is uh, going to always flash with a duty cycle of 50%, but uh, we can adjust the, the period of um, the flashing uh, so that the period goes between um, 0 and 2 seconds. Uh, so we can adjust the half period, uh, which is the time between the LED flipping states, um, from 0 to 1 second. And so uh, we'll be able to adjust the frequency of the yellow LED blinking uh, to be to the point where we can't perceive the individual flashes, um, or make it you know, much slower, factor 2 slower than it is right now. The red LED um, starts out off, but we can turn it on and turn it off. We can query the state of either the, the parameters that control the behavior of these two LEDs. We can query the state of the red LED. We'll be able to query the state of the two push buttons and also read the value of the potentiometer. Um, and so there'll be commands that we can send over the serial link that will do all of those things. And we'll go through all of that. We'll walk through the firmware uh, or the sketch that will be running on the Arduino. And um, then we'll look at different ways of interacting it with it from, um, from the host. So uh, this is the first version of the sketch. Um, the first version will make use of what I would call C-style strings, which are um, arrays of characters that are terminated by a null character. And um, the second version that we'll walk through um, uses uh, C++-style string objects. And um, the behavior is pretty much the same between the two different versions. Um, and it'll be up to you to decide which which uh, which type of uh, string objects you'd like to work with. Um, I guess uh, just in a nutshell, the difference really is that the the code is cleaner with the C++ style string objects, but it uses more um, more resources on the Arduino, more memory um, to use the C++ style string objects. So they're a little bit more. Uh, heavyweight in terms of their memory footprint and the resources that they use, but they're more convenient. So um, in this first version, um, here we have some constants defined. We have uh, some pins. So the green LED, yellow LED, red LED switches and the potentiometer are defined as pin numbers for convenience. 
we have the period of the green LEDs flashing at 1000 milliseconds. We have the, uh, the maximum allowable interval for the yellow LED between flips and that is again a thousand milliseconds or one second and we have a uh, the length of our command buffer in characters which is 128 and we've got some global variables that we're defining we've got a green time and a yellow time for keeping track of when the cycle started uh, for the green LED the last time and when the yellow LED last flipped state we've got um, variables for the current yellow interval uh, which controls the period and we have um, a variable to store the current value of the green interval which will control the duty cycle of the green LED. We have a position um, index so this keeps track of where we are in the command buffer what index location we're at in the command buffer and then we have the actual command buffer, which is an array of uh, characters that is of length, uh, command buffer length. We have two helper functions. Uh, these are forward declarations, so that they're defined at the bottom of the code, but we typically will have to put in a forward declaration if we're going to use the function before it's actually first defined. Um, so the first one is is it time, which is uh, the helper function that we used or we developed in the Blink Millie 6 um, example that will handle the um, checking whether it's time to do something with the Millie's timer and it handles the rollover case. And we have a helper function which is called string to hex and this will basically take a null terminated uh, C style string and um, assuming it is a um, sequence of characters that are legitimate hexadecimal digits, it will convert that into a 16-bit uh, unsigned integer. So I will be using that to parse the values that we're passing uh, with our commands as uh, parameters. So our setup function configures the output pins to be outputs and the input pins to be inputs sets the initial values of the three LEDs. The green and the yellow start high and the red starts low. We look up the current value of the millis timer and set that, that store that value in green time and yellow time to get the ball rolling. And then we're starting the serial uh, object, the serial port uh, with a baud rate of 115,200 baud. So that's a little bit faster than typical examples in Arduino code for the serial port uh, but it's a good it's a good speed um, to use um, it's not super fast but it's also not super slow so it's it's probably it's a standard value for the baud rate that um, is probably a good one to use if you want to transfer data uh, over the serial link uh, relatively quickly so then our loop function uh, does a couple of different things uh, first thing it does is it, it handles the flashing of the various LEDs by uh, similar mechanisms to what we've seen uh, in our Blink Millie's series of videos, um, our series of sketches. We have we look up the current time of the Millie's timer and we see if it's time to do something with the green LED or the yellow LED. The way the green LED works is a little bit different we have two different things we can do. We can set the, the green LED high when it's the start of the cycle, and then at some point during the cycle, uh, we have to set it low. And um, so first we're checking to see if the green interval has passed since the start of the last cycle, and that would be time to set the uh, LED uh, control signal to low. Uh, if the period has passed, then it's time to start the next cycle and we would set the value high again. So this will implement our variable duty cycle um, <clears throat> with different high and low times. Then the uh, yellow LED is just like we've seen uh, in the previous examples where we're just basically after the interval we're just flipping the state. And um, so that's the LEDs. 
And then uh, if there is a character or one or more characters available in the serial receive buffer, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the, the first one that's available and we're going to see what it is. If it's a carriage return, that will signal that this is the uh, end of the command, potential command, and it's time to parse the buffer. So what we're going to do is we're going to null terminate the string at the current position. So that's a zero character. And then we're going to call the parse command buffer function, which is going to look at the contents of the command buffer and see if it's a legitimate command. And if it is, it's going to handle um, that particular command. And then we're going to reset the uh, buffer position back to zero so we can start the start over with the next command. Otherwise, we're going to check to see if uh, our current position is uh, one less than the end of the buffer. Uh, if it is, then um, we don't have enough space to put the character that we currently received or that we just received there and also null we'll terminate the string and so we're going to wrap the buffer around so we're going to set the position back to zero store the character at the first position and bump up the position by one um, the normal case is going to be when there's plenty of room left in the buffer and so we store the received character at the current position and bump the position up so that's the loop function, and then uh, the next thing to look at is the uh, parse command buffer function. And so what this amounts to is uh, fairly primitive. Um, it basically is just an if else if else if else if else if tree here that's looking at the contents of the command buffer and comparing it with the various um, commands. And if it matches a particular one, then the, the body of that if or else if statement will take care of the uh, handling of that command or executing of that command. And so um, we're using your string compare, strcmp and strncmp. These are standard uh, C uh, string functions that basically uh, the first one compares two strings and if they are uh, equal to each other, it returns a zero. If uh, the first one is uh, lexicographically before the second one, or alphabetically before the the second one, if you want to be a little less precise about it, um, then it returns a negative number. If the second one is uh, lexicographically after the, the first one, then it returns a positive number. Um, and so you can you can actually order these like put these strings in an alphabetical order uh, by looking at the the value whether it's positive or negative or if they're equal it's zero so we're just testing for equality here um, so there's two types of commands one is uh, ends in a question mark and that's a query we're asking for information back and in this case we're comparing the whole command buffer with uh, one of these strings and the other uh, possibility is the one that's the ones that end in exclamation points. Those are ones that will have a parameter following the exclamation point. And so in this case, we're, we're just looking to see if the, the contents of the command buffer um, match uh, the partial command here up to a certain point. So you know, green exclamation point has uh, six characters, and so what, what we're doing here with this third argument is saying compare these things up to a maximum of this number of characters. And so we're saying is is the the first six characters of command buffer green exclamation point. Um, so those are the two kinds of comparisons we're doing here. Um, so let's look at this first one here. So we're saying, is the command buffer equal to capital G-R-E-E-N question mark? If so, we're going to do this. We're going to basically use serial print, the value of the green interval variable, and we're going to represent that as a hexadecimal uh, value. And then we're going to print uh, backslash R backslash N, which is going to be our line terminator sequence of characters. Um, and then another example would be green bang. Um, th this will be green bang, and then a sequence of uh, hexadecimal digits that represent the parameter value that we're writing into, or we're intending to write into the green interval variable. 
And so uh, if we do match the first six characters with green bang, then we're going to um, go in here and basically pass this function string to hex, um, command buffer starting at the sixth position. And then um, if, if there is a uh, hexadecimal sequence of digits there that can be converted into a 16-bit uh, value, it, this function will do that and it will return true if that con conversion succeeds and false if it does not. So we have this if statement here so that if it returns true then we're going to actually do something with it. If there's a problem with the way the command is formed we're just going to ignore it and not do anything in response. And then um, if the value is less than the green period then the value is what gets written into the green interval Otherwise, green period is what gets written in here. So we're using uh, this this thing, which is called a ternary operator, to do that. Basically, the way this works is it has a Boolean expression. And if that expression evaluates to true, then the ternary operator uh, returns whatever is between the question mark and the colon. That would be the result of the evaluation of this piece of the expression. If this Boolean expression evaluates to false, then um, the value that the expression returns is uh, basically the thing after the colon. So this is basically going to uh, allow us to clamp the value of the variable uh, to a maximum of green period. So um, the yellow one works the same way as the green one, basically. Um, just has yellow interval and um, yellow interval max here. Uh, otherwise, they are pretty much the same as the green. Down here, we have red question mark, and that's going to basically do a digital read on red LED and print that out in backslash r backslash n. Um, red bang is going to um, basically set the red LED high or low, depending on whether this value is um, actually zero or non-zero. So in the typical use case, we'll probably just go red bang zero or red bang one and um, and never have a different value other than one for the non-zero value. But in this particular case, uh, we've set it up so that any non-zero value would result in the red LED going high uh, or turning on. So uh, switch one question mark is going to do a digital read on switch one and print that out of the serial um, port. Same with switch two. Uh, pot question mark is going to do an analog read and print that out over the serial link. Um, and so that, that's basically the, the parse command buffer function. Um, this is the helper function from blink nilly 6 Just dropped in here. And this is the Boolean, uh, or the string to hex helper function. There's a couple things about this. So the way this works is that if there's nothing to convert, in other words, it's an empty string, uh, we're going to consider that a failed conversion. If uh, there are leading or initial spaces or tabs, we're going to skip over those. And uh, then we're going to start converting at the first non-space or tab character. And we're going to go until we see the null terminating string, or the null termination character at the end of the string. We're going to check to see if the value of the character at the current position falls in the range of 0 to 9. If that's the case, then we're going to basically shift the current value of this val um, result over by one hexadecimal digit, which corresponds to four bit positions. And then we're going to add to that um, the numerical value zero to nine, depending on which digit we're seeing. And that's just get got by taking the character value and subtracting off the encoding of zero. So if we have a zero character here, zero minus the zero character encoding gives us zero. If we have a one character, they are offset from each other by one, and so that will give us a numerical value of one. 
and so on up to 9. They are uh, conveniently in, uh, in order from 0 to 9 in the way that they're encoded. We have a to f, lowercase, and a to f, uppercase. And uh, those represent the numbers, uh, the digit values 10 to 15. And so we're basically looking at the difference between um, the character and a. That gives us a number between 0 and 5. And we add to that 10 to get the value of the digit between 10 and 15. If we don't see one of these three possibilities, then we have a failed conversion. Um, if we get down to the end here, we've got a legit conversion, and we return true. And uh, that's how that helper function works. So um, just to give you an idea of how this, how this works, uh, we can interact with this through the uh, serial monitor um, tool, which is in the Arduino IDE. So you can, you can uh, go up to Tools and pull down Serial Monitor, and that brings up this window here. And we can type in something we want to transmit to the Arduino and hit return or click on send and it will send that command out and then the result will be accumulating in this in this little window here. Um, we have to set the baud rate here to match the baud rate that we use to start up the serial object and then uh, we've set the line uh, the line end of line character to carriage return um, to match what we have in the uh, loop function. And so I can go here and I can type uh, red question mark and since the red LED is off that returns a zero. We can do red bang one and that has the effect of turning the red LED on and we can query the value of red again and we get back one. Uh, we can if we like we can uh, read the state of let's say tactile switch one with switch one question mark and if we're not pressing it we get a zero if we press it and hold it we get a one we release it we get a zero again we do the same thing with switch two zero hold it down we get a one release it we get a zero we do the same thing to read the value of the pot two one six in hexadecimal we turn it all the way to the left, we should get zero. If we turn it all the way to the right, we should get the hexadecimal equivalent of 1023, which is 3FF. And that all seems good. If we want to change, let's say, the duty cycle of the green LED, we can say uh, green Can see what it is to start with. It's 1F4, which corresponds to 500. And if we do green, well, let's say, I don't know, 40, 40. Now you can see the green LED is flashing uh, very briefly and it's off for the rest of the cycle while the yellow LED is still going at 50% duty cycle. If we were to do uh, green bang, oh, I don't know, what, uh, three, I don't know, three, six, zero. Now it's on for most of the cycle and uh, flashes off briefly. We can change the yellow period, go yellow, yellow bang, uh, let's try. Uh, I don't know, 100 or 100. Zero, zero. Now it's flashing a little bit faster. You can do yellow 400, zero, zero. that should make it go much slower. It's probably the maximum. On for one second, off for one second. So we can issue these commands and see the return values in the serial monitor, but that's not necessarily how we would like to interact with this thing. Um, we might like to have some host software running in um, maybe Python or MATLAB or something like that, interacting with the Arduino without the IDE running. 
And so we've got uh, I've got an example of that where I've written uh, some Python code to interact with this. I'll show you that in a minute. I want to just walk through the second variation or the second variant on the serial command sketch. This this one is the one that makes use of the uh, C++ style strings. A lot of it's going to be pretty much the same as the first version. Uh, the first key difference is that instead of having a character array for the command buffer, we have a string object which is just command and we initialize it to the null string. The setup here is the same. The loop function is the same in, in the uh, part of animating the LEDs. This is where we start to get some difference here, so we check to see if there's any uh, characters available in the serial receive buffer. If there are, we take the first one. We see if it's a carriage return. Uh, if so, we just parse the command, and then we set the command back to the null string. Otherwise, we just concatenate the received character to the end of the command. And here there's no worry about wrap around, no worry about the buffer, uh, being full and having to wrap around. Uh, we just expand the command uh, as much as it needs to be expanded, and of course uh, that could potentially be a memory intensive thing. Um, may not be, but um, it could be. And, uh, and so that is uh, one key difference. The other difference uh, is how this uh, parse command function works. Instead of using string compare and strn compare, uh, we're using the equals method of uh, str the command string object, and we're using the starts with method um, of the command string object in the case that we're just looking at the uh, first few characters of the string versus the entire string. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty similar to uh, to what we had before. So um, I guess the other difference is instead of using um, an offset on the um, the into the array, we are using the substring method. And so uh, substring with just one one uh, argument is the starting point, and it goes to the end of the string. And so we're extracting basically the remainder of the string starting after the first part of the command, after the exclamation point, to extract the uh, parameter that we're passing here with it. So otherwise, these commands are all the same, and uh, the way that they're handled is pretty much the same between the two versions. The other difference is in the way that uh, we're doing the string to hex helper function here with the C style. C++ style string object. Um, instead of um, using a character array, we're looking at the length method of the string to see if it's um, a null string. We are looking at uh, the character using the character at method of the string instead of looking directly at the uh, character using the um, array construct. So those are the main differences here. This function works the same way as the other one did. It's just it's using a different um, type of string. So like I said, you can decide which you prefer. Um, my guess is that most of you may like the C++ style strings. They, they are definitely cleaner and um, I think more, more um, understandable. Um, and so uh, the trade-off, again, is just that it's a little bit more resource-intensive. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's the firmware. And so we're going to shut down the um, IDE. And we're going to look at the Python code. And so uh, to begin with, I've created a Python uh, class that uh, allows us to interact with the hardware using PySerial, which is the standard Python module for um, for talking to uh, serial devices. And so we have this, uh, this class called Serial Command, and the, um, the initializer uh, basically takes an optional argument, which is the port. This would be on a Windows machine, something like COM 
one, COM2 on a Linux style machine or Unix style machine like a Mac, Mac OS or Ubuntu or something like that. Uh, this would be like slash dev slash something something something. Um, and if you don't provide that, it basically loops through or like enumerates all of the serial port devices and checks their vendor ID and product ID against a list of known sort of Arduino Uno and clone um, vendor ID product ID pairs that I found uh, on the the, uh, the internet. And so it basically tries to connect to an Arduino Uno that's on the system. If it's successful in doing so, it opens that serial port with 115,200 baud as the rate. We have two basic methods, the write method and the read method. The write method is going to write out a command that we, we pass into it, and it's going to put a carriage return at the end um, as our firmware is expecting. And then the read is going to do a read line, which uh, is looking for that uh, backslash r backslash n. And then uh, we make use of these functions uh, in some slightly higher level or more abstract methods that basically send the various commands out. So we've got get green, and that basically writes out the green question mark and then does a read and does a conversion from the string that's returned uh, to an integer and that, that's returned by the this method. So we have likewise uh, set green, we got get green, set green, get yellow, set yellow, get red, set red, get switch one, get switch two, and get pot. And so I can go over here to uh, my terminal window, and I can run a Python shell, Python 3, and I can import a serial command. I can create a serial command object. And we're connected to a device. And so we can do uh, foo dot get red, and we get a zero because the red LED is off. If we like, we can set red, pass it a one, turns the red LED on, and if we do get red, it's a one. We can set red to zero. We can get red, and it's zero. We can do foo dot, uh, let's say, get switch one, and that returns a zero if I'm not pushing the button. I push the button, and repeat it, I get a one. I let go, and repeat it, I get a zero. I can get the pot value Right now it should be around 500 something because it's about halfway. I turn it to the ground side and repeat, I get zero. If I turn it all the way to the plus five side, I should get 1023. If I turn it to three o'clock, it's gonna be, you know, maybe 800 or something. If I turn it to uh, nine o'clock, you know, maybe it'll be, I don't know, 100 something. So we can we can get that. We can change the let's say the blinking of the green LED, change the duty cycle. So we can set green. Uh, let's say set it to a hundred. That'll be a tenth of a second or a ten percent duty cycle. We could set it to nine hundred and that'll be a ninety percent duty cycle. And so we can we can interact with it here at the Python prompt. Uh, we could write a simple um, Python script that imports it, just like I did at the prompt here, and collects some of these commands in in a loop or something to do something repetitive. Um, can also um, have a little GUI, and I've written a little. Um, GUI using tkinter, which is a uh, 
GUI toolkit that comes bundled with uh, many Python installations. Um, may not be the most popular or the most powerful GUI toolkit framework, but it's um, it's passable. And so here is uh, the little GUI. It's the initializer basically opens up a uh, serial command device and creates a little GUI, so it creates a window. It uh, creates a button to toggle the red LED. There's two uh, sliders or scales that allow us to change the duty cycle of the green LED and the uh, period of the yellow LED. There's uh, three labels that basically will update automatically with the state to reflect the state of the uh, tactile switches and the potentiometer. And um, that the, these labels are updated using a, uh, a timer. Um, so this, this uh, after method allows us to schedule uh, this function update status to be called after a certain amount of time in milliseconds. And I found um, because the Arduino, when you start it up, uh, does something funky with the uh, serial port that has to do with the bootloader, uh, you have to basically put a, a bit of a delay in here before you start the regular updates, which I'm going to be doing at a rate of uh, 50 milliseconds, or an interval of 50 milliseconds once the thing gets running, but the, the initial delay is going to be uh, half a second. I just kind of fiddled around with that until I got it to work reliably. Um, and like I said, I think it has to do with the way that the bootloader is set up to run on the Arduino. Um, anyway, so uh, these are the callback functions. So you can see the toggle red uh, is, a, is the command that's executed when you click on the toggle red button. And so this is executing uh, the set red method of our serial command object and it's passing one minus the return value of the get red method. So if the get red method says zero, then this will set it to one. If it says one, it will set it back to zero. That has the effect of toggling. This uh, set green callback basically just passes the slider value onto the, the, the firmware using the set green method. And uh, same with the yellow. And then here's the update status um, method, and it's basically configuring the text in the label with the value that's returned by the get switch one method, the get switch two method, and the get pot method, and then it schedules the next update job or the, the next update call after another 50 milliseconds. Um, so anyway, that's that's the code, and we can run it. So we can do Python three. Serial, oh, serial command GUI. And here's our little GUI. And if I click on the toggle red button, the red LED toggles. If I push the switch one, you can see that the switch one label changes from 0 to 1 and back to 0. If I push the switch 2 button, the switch 2 label does the same thing. I can turn the potentiometer dial toward ground and the value goes to 0. I can turn it toward the plus 5 side and the value goes up to 1023, just like you'd expect. Uh, I can change the slider, I can change the duty cycle of the green LED so that it's lower duty cycle, I can change it so it's a higher duty cycle, I can change the flashing of the red yellow LED so that the yellow LED is blinking very fast, I can change it so it's blinking very slow. All kinds of fun. So all of this code is in the repo. Uh, with, a, with the rest of the sample code, you're welcome to look at it, and hopefully it gives you some um, some ideas for how you might consider structuring things for um, 
Mini Project 2. So thanks for watching.